Alright everybody, welcome to this video, which is going to be about the matrix, or matrices, or matrices. Yeah, matrix. So last time, recall, that we learned about vectors, and vectors have a magnitude and direction. And so we can represent vectors as arrays, so we have one, two, three. We recall that this can be drawn in a Euclidean grid. So we take the x position one, and the y position two, and the z position three, and plot it. We can, we can draw it, and that's all good. So if we take vectors, we did a few different operations on it, we can stack them up as well. So we can take this first vector and draw another vector underneath. And we did operations and what if we draw one more? We can see that we're building, what we're building is an array. And if we consider this all one big piece, that's essentially what a matrix is. A matrix is an array of vectors. So if we think of our vector like x sub a for the value in position a and x sub b for the value x in position b and the value in position c, we can also write a general formula for matrices. You know, I really don't know the plural, so correct me in the comic comments. The correct plural is it matrices or ma just matrix? That's one of those weird things about English. But here's the general. So we can think of it as x sub a a. We're adding another subset here, right? So we have x sub a b, and then we can have x of a c. So in a three by three matrix, we're gonna have nine data points, and they can all be represented in this general way of having two subsets. In this case in the x and the y direction. So we can perform a few different operations on matrices. We can do addition, subtraction, and these aren't all the operations you can do on a matrix, but just some of them. Multiplication. There's a few others that maybe I'll go over in another video. Scaling, and these are the uh, big four, four that I'm gonna go over in this video and that we're going to implement in Holy C. So we have an addition and a subtraction problem. It's pretty straightforward from regular addition and subtraction. All we have to do is take each part and add them up and place them in the corresponding part. So what this means is you can only add and subtract when the matrix are the same size. If you wanted to write a general formula for that, you could say when matrix 1x is equal to matrix 2x and matrix 1y is equal to matrix 2y, where these values correspond to the size of the matrix. So in this case, one plus four is five, two plus three is five, two plus three is five, one plus four is five. Subtraction is the same thing. So we do one minus four is negative three, three minus two is one, two minus three is negative one, and four minus one is three. Matrix multiplication is a little less intuitive than adding and subtracting. There is something we have, we can't just look at the size. We have to actually look at the columns and the rows of each of these matrix. So to multiply the value of matrix one Y, or in this case, the columns, which is there's two columns in matrix one, must equal matrix two X, and there's two rows. So in this case, they do equal in rows and columns. So to put it in other words, the columns of M1 must equal the rows of M2. And you might ask yourself, so what is the size of the product? The product's dimensions are equal to the other values here. So we have three columns in M2 and three rows in M1, so the product is equal to M1x by M2y, which is 3 by 3. To solve this problem, we're going to multiply the value in position xaa, so this is 1, and multiply it by the value in position xaa in the second matrix, so 1 times 2, and then we're going to add it to the value of the second xab value to the xba value in matrix 2, so plus 1 times 4 is going to be the value in xaa in the product. And so the second value, if this is a three by three matrix, the second value underneath is going to be equal to two. So two is value XBA. So two multiplied by this XA8 value in the second matrix, two. And then we add it to three times four. So you can kind of see the pattern that's going on here, start to form. We'll do the last one. So we're going to go to XCA, which is five, times two, this first value, plus eight, which is our XCB value. So that's eight times four. So we take each column, and that's the first value, and then we multiply the second value is the column in the second matrix, and we add them together. So if we wanted to get the complete product, this value, 1 times 2 plus 1 times 8, 1 times 4 plus 1 times 8, this is 2 times 2 plus 3 times 8, this is 2 times 4 plus 3 times 8. So this is the pattern now, is that 1 divided, 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 4. And if we solve all that out, we get the answers 6, 10, 12, 16, 28, 32, 42, 74, and 84. And that's our answer. Scaling, once you know that, is relatively simple. Scaling is just multiplying the matrix by a scalar value. So in this case, if we wanted to multiply it by 2, the value would be 2 times 2, 4, 4, 8, 8, 16, and 16.
First, I cd into the current directory and include the vector file that we created last time. I set up an object declaration for the matrix object, which stores its size, the vector data, and the next and last vector data references. Basically, it's a recursive queue of linked nodes. We have each object linked together in memory, and they each have pointers to the object next and before them. It's called a CQ, or just a, a, it's a cool circle. Since a matrix is just an array of vectors, we can pass in how we want the dimensions of the matrix to be and then create a new vector for every row in the matrix. So we set a block of memory for the first vector uh, and save it to first, and then we loop through and we go through, that, starting on that first block of memory, we go through and add an additional uh, memory allocation for every additional vector that we want to add into the matrix. And we just can reference it from next or last to determine our place uh, in the vector uh, and uh, where exactly in the matrix we are. And then we return the first pointer so we can always find where we are. The magnitude is our y value, and the vector is our x value. So we have to loop through the memory m until we get to our x, and then get from the vector at our position y. We loop through, and we can print it onto the screen, and we can also replace our update values. Of course, we have scale and destroy, so we just free the memory and also multiply by the values. We just also have to make this main function to call out and test it out. With adding, we check to make sure they're the same size, and then we loop through. After we create a sum and initialize it, we set the values in the new sum to the values at the corresponding positions in M1 and M2 added together. And then subtraction is just the opposite, where we go through and subtract the values rather than add them. Multiplying is a little trickier, and there's a couple ways to do it, and I just ended up using an extra variable called sums here, which loops through and gets each index value across the current integral. So we add together all the products, and I just use a sum to keep track of how many additions we're going to do, basically. And that's, uh, we add them all together into this current product, and then we set the, just like how we ha reserved a, the answer in a, in a matrix, we, we set the values to, to the correct answer.